<clears throat> the Spirit of the Lord has filled the whole world, and that which contains all things understands what is said. Alleluia. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, and what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth, peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who by the mystery of today's great feast, sanctify your whole church in every people and nation. Pour out, we pray, the gifts of the Holy Spirit across the face of the earth, and with the divine grace that was at work when the gospel was first proclaimed, fill now once more the hearts of all believers. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When the time for Pentecost was fulfilled, they were all in one place together. And suddenly there came from the sky a noise like a strong driving wind and it filled the entire house in which they were. Then there appeared to them tongues as of fire, which parted and came to rest on each one of them. And they, be, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in different tongues as the Spirit enabled them to proclaim. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven staying in Jerusalem. At this sound, they gathered in a large crowd, but they were confused because they because each one heard them speaking in his own language. They were astounded, and in amazement asked, Are not all these people who are speaking Galileans? Then how does each of us hear them in his native language? We are Parthians, Medes, and Elamites, inhabitants of Mesopotamia, Judea, and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the districts of Libya near Cyrene, as well as travelers from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs. Yet we hear them speaking in our own tongues of the mighty acts of God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The responsorial is, Lord, send out your spirit and renews, renew the face of the earth. Lord, send out your spirit and renew the face of the earth. Bless the Lord God, you are great indeed. How manifold the earth is full of your creatures. Lord, send out your spirit and renew the face of the earth. May the glory of the Lord endure forever. 
May the Lord be glad in his works. Pleasing to him be my theme. I will be glad in the Lord. Lord, send out your spirit and renew the face of the earth. If you take away their breath, they perish and return to forth your spirit, they are created, and you renew the face. Not, we have not, nothing good in deed or thought, nothing free from taint of ill. Heal our wounds, our strength renew, on our dryness pour your dew, wash the stains of guilt away. Bend the stubborn heart and will, melt the frozen, warm the chill, guide the steps that go astray. On the faithful who adore and confess you evermore, in your sevenfold gift descend, give them virtue's sure reward. Give them your salvation, Lord, give them joys that never end. Amen. Alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. Come, come, Holy Spirit, fill the heart of your faithful and kindle in them the fire of your, of your love. Alleluia, alleluia. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Young. On the evening of the first day of the week, when the doors were locked, where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came on the, and stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. When he, he had said this, he showed them his hands and, and his side. The disciples rejoiced when they, saw the, when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the fire has sent me, so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit, who sins you forgive are forgiven them, and, and who sins you, you retain are retained. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. It's very good that we are gathered here today. And providential in a number of senses because today is the Feast of Pentecost, the great birthday of the church, as it were. The day in which we can think is the day in which all of God's promises throughout the whole history of the world from creation to the Old Testament, in the incarnation, the whole life of Christ, to his suffering, suffering his death and his resurrection, all of it is completed today with the sending of the Holy Spirit. Why is that? Because the Holy Spirit is the life, the love, and the truth of God. And that is something that we stand in, it's something that we share. Whenever we read through the readings of the, the Holy Spirit who descends upon the apostles in tongues of fire, as tongues of fire, we see there the image of the church of not only all space and the whole world, but also of all time. The fathers of the church, when giving some of their homilies on Pentecost Sunday, they would boast, they would um, promote the reality of the unity with the Holy Spirit by saying that we all speak as one now in a multitude of languages throughout the whole world, but we all stand intrinsically as one being with Christ. So that even though I don't know Tagali, Deacon does, even though I know some Spanish, as Deacon Lopez knows fully, we each share in the ministry of the church and the life with Christ, who unites us by the power of the Holy Spirit. This is so dynamic. 
whenever, when we're looking at the first reading, the apostles went out and they spoke in different languages. And the people were amazed because they heard the apostles speaking. The, um, and they understood in their own native tongue. But what that signifies is that the apostles are the embodiment of the church as a whole. Because remember, the apostles were present and they go and proclaim. But so too was Our Lady. And so too were other disciples who all receive the Holy Spirit. Now, the apostles had their unique mission and goal to go and teach, to consecrate, to govern the church. But we all share in that one same mission. We are all given this unity and life with God. And so thinking even with our own experience over the last two months, being in somewhat isolation, maybe living in some type of fear and feeling physically distant from one another. Maybe even the way that the Mass is being run right now, maybe we feel that distance. But we are here together, not only corporally, physically present in the church, but we're also united by the sacrament that Christ has given us in baptism, in confirmation. And then in the fullness of that unity, and Holy Communion. Even though we were in our own homes and we were watching Masses online, offering up our prayers and our sacrifices, anything offered to Christ are intrinsically united with Him so that whenever Christ at the Mass offers Himself back to the Father, we are included in that. And in that way, always truly present at the Mass. Here is that mutual sharing, that mutual indwelling. And when Christ receives the things that we, we offer him, he offers it to the Father for the glory of the Father and for our salvation. And what does he give us in return? The Holy Spirit. That life of God. Not in an abstract or an invisible way, but in reality. This great unity he is expressed in many signs and symbols. I once shared this story a number of months ago, but I'd like to share it again. It's a personal experience of where I concretely, in a sense, saw the unity of the church. I saw it through a language, but that common expression of faith for me really connected in this encounter, and I hope it does the same for you. A number of years ago, I had the privilege of studying abroad in Rome with my college. And we just so happened to be there at the time of the beatification of Saint, now St. Saint John Paul II. And so we waited in line for the Mass the following day to witness the beatification by, at that moment, Pope Benedict XVI. And so we end up waiting in line for 12 hours waiting for the beatification. There were so many people. It's probably the only day in history that there were more people from Poland in Rome than there were Italians, because they all took vacation. But as we were waiting, the crowds were so packed that it was impossible to stay as a group. So many of us were separated. I myself was separated from all my classmates and friends, and so I'm in this sea of people by myself. But thanks be to God for that, because if I wasn't, I wouldn't have had these encounters. There's a number of encounters I've had, but one I'd like to share with you was this group of young adults from France who were there for the beatification, obviously. And even though I didn't speak anything in French and they didn't speak a word of English, we had, they wanted me to teach them a song in English, so I taught them Country Roads. And then they tried to teach me a number, nor could I sing at the time, because I cannot speak French. I just can't. It's just, for some reason, it doesn't work. But... As after we ex shared and exchanged the songs, we decided to pray the rosary as a group. And even though we didn't have a common language, we agreed that each decade would be a different language. And so I started the rosary, and we sa I said the first decade in English. Then they took over and took over the second decade in French. But then this awesome thing happened. It wasn't planned. At the time of the third decade, this random guy, not too far from us, starts saying the decade in Italian. And when that decade was done, another group piped in and said their decade in German. And if that's not amazing, this is even more so. 
that fifth decade, without missing a heartbeat, all of us joined in, and we prayed that final decade in Latin. Because Latin, as one sense right there, is that expression of that common tongue of the church. So that even though we were strangers in body, we are brothers and sisters in the body of Christ. And that was shared through the Latin language. But that's a reality for us because we all speak one language together. Maybe not Latin, but we speak the language of grace. That's the language we know. That's the language we were given. That's the tongue of fire that descends upon the church to give us life and direction. So we're never truly alone. We never stand on our own. We stand with Christ, who makes everything efficacious and does not abandon us, even in times of panic and fear. Let's cling to this reality of Pentecost. Let's live what the college had expressed, this new Pentecost within ourselves, so that we may truly understand the unity of the church, the unity we have with Christ, standing as brothers and sisters, encouraging one another, and going forth into the world to share that language of grace so that others may know as we know. We never stand alone because Christ remains with us even into the ending of the world. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Since God endows us with the gift of his own life by imparting the Holy Spirit, let us come to him with prayers inspired by the same Spirit. Let us come to him alive and free in the divine presence. For all who have been signed and sealed with the Holy Spirit, that this church may be united as one body made of many parts, let us pray to, to the Lord. Lord hear our For the people of the world who do not know God, that the spirit of truth proclaimed to every nation may indeed renew the face, of, the face of the earth, let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our For the outpouring of the, of the spirit of peace, that men and women may know the forgiveness of their sins, let us, let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our For this community gathered by God, that the Spirit who make holy our Eucharist gift may strengthen and refresh us, let us pray to the Lord. Lord pray for our sick, especially for Jan Berg, Virgie, Zimmerman, 
Let us pray to the Lord. For the soul of the, of the departed, that they may be made perfect in the life-giving spirit, especially Ramon Matias, let us, let us pray to the Lord. All-powerful Father, receive these prayers from a people made one by the Holy Spirit, who always dwells within us. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, though become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, Fruit of the vine and work of human hands will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that as promised by your Son, the Holy Spirit may reveal to us more abundantly the hidden mystery of this sacrifice and graciously lead us into all truth. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For bringing your Paschal mystery to completion, you bestowed the Holy Spirit today on those you made your adopted children by uniting them to your only begotten Son. This same Spirit, as the Church came to birth, opened to all peoples the knowledge of God and brought together the many languages of the earth in the profession of the one faith. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church, be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis our Pope and Michael our Bishop, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants. And all gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you, For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls, and hope of health and well-being, 
and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. Celebrating the most sacred day of Pentecost, on which the Holy Spirit appeared to the apostles in tongues of fire, and in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers and all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, order our days in your peace, and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and count among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect, make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands. And with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, as Almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands. And once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of, his, of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance, and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant, Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest, Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son, may be filled with every, gra every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants, who have gone before us with the sign of faith, and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who those sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, Graciously grant some share in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. 
Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, keep us always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we wait the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. With your Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. They were all filled with the Holy Spirit and spoke of the marvels of God. Hallelujah.
as we are all united in the one body of Christ. For those who are not able to join us today but are joining us for the live stream, we now make the act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who bestow heavenly gifts upon your church, safeguard, we pray, the grace you have given, that the gift of the Holy Spirit poured out upon her may retain all its force, and that this spiritual food may gain her abundance of eternal redemption. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. For the mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Saint Michael, the Archangel. The penitent man, the Archangel.